Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Just the other day I came across onto Asus latest ROG gaming monitor, the PG258Q, which has a refresh rate of staggering 240Hz at 1080p resolution. And that got me thinking for a moment in terms of what kind of PC configuration would you have to have, or to be more precise GPU, to run it without a problem at those high frame rates, in order to fully take advantage of that refresh rate and match it to it so you can get that silky smooth motion, especially when talking about AAA game titles. For your classic 1080p resolution, reaching high frame rates is a bit easier, especially in terms of older but still more popular FPS games like the Counter Strike. But what about newer games and higher resolutions like 2560 x 1440 and 2560 x 1080, which are widely found in gaming monitors with refresh rates anywhere from 120 to 200 Hz? That's something I will try to find out today, together with not just one but two MSI GTX 1070 gaming x graphics card since at the time beside mine i had a second one on disposal you can check out the rest of my system configuration in the description box down below I'll start off by looking at single GPU setup, or to be more exact, looking at the performance of only one GTX 1070 in few popular FPS titles, as those are most likely to be played on high refresh monitors, together with some other games like Dirt Rally, Witcher 3 and Tom Clancy's The Division. In Battlefield 1 I was far off from what you would need, even for those lower refresh rate gaming monitors and at 1080p resolution. Without a surprise, in Counter Strike I was closing in and even over to 240 FPS, so the 240Hz refresh rate monitors could be fully utilized in some scenarios, and that's without any performance tweaks, so there's still a lot of headroom. In Doom I was getting pretty decent numbers, but still not quite there yet in terms of really high frame rates. Coming down to the Overwatch, you'll be looking at anywhere from 120 to 170 FPS at ultra settings, or over 200 FPS at low settings. Speaking of that, as you probably noticed, I also did my benchmarking runs using low settings in each game, just to see how it scales and would you maybe get any benefits in terms of getting some extra frames by lowering the graphics quality, especially if you're willing to sacrifice that for even smoother motion when having a high refresh monitor. In most of the games you'll get a pretty substantial performance increase, while some were acting really weird and leveling off at a certain threshold across all three resolutions, probably due to the the CPU bottleneck since the GPU isn't getting any demanding load or just the particular game being badly optimized for this kind of scenario. Putting the other GTX 1070 into the existing formula, which I by the way connected to the first one using this very cool looking MSI's high bandwidth SLI bridge and enabling the two-way SLI setup, I went in to see what kind of performance bump would you get with benchmarking again those same games. Taking a look at the performance of such setup, there is a lot to comment here. Before all, right off the bat, low graphical settings and those benchmarking results are even weirder, but again, it's no surprise since for two GTX 1070s, this doesn't represent any kind of serious load at all, so it slings everything back to the CPU, making it the bad guy here. I would ignore this portion of results completely, they are here only as a fun factor. Beside the games which don't like SLI setup to begin with, like Counter Strike, Doom, Battlefield 1, which are known for having multi-GPU problems, you can also notice that this effect was not only seen at low, but also at high and ultra graphical settings, as SLI configuration with this kind of horsepower is chewing through 1920 by 1080 and even 2560 by 1080 resolution, effectively again being underutilized. At 2560 and 1440 resolution and highest graphical settings in some more demanding and for SLI better optimized games, you can see a decent performance jump thanks to the dual GPU setup, but other than that, to fully take advantage of their power in a proper way, where they can scale above 50% on average, you'll need to put them under higher stress, in particular higher resolutions. Just the perfect example of that is the Dirt Rally and The Witcher 3, where you can see a performance boost when jumping from 1080p resolution to other two higher ones. 
All of this was an interesting experiment, it's obvious that I wouldn't recommend building a configuration like this one in particular and especially for this kind of exact scenario. Its performance just wouldn't be fully utilized at those kind of resolutions and in terms of chasing high frame rates. Bottom line, taking everything into consider, this is a very odd situation and sort of double-edged sword problem. For you to get more frames at those common resolutions for high refresh monitors, you'll probably need to aim at a stronger single GPU solution rather than just throwing in a second GPU at the problem. Strong dual GPU setups will probably make more sense once we get high refresh monitors with 4K resolution, although in that scenario, at least with the current generation of high-end GPUs, we would be far from 200 FPS as they don't have enough power to reach it at that resolution, basically putting us back to square one. This is slowly starting to seem like a never-ending loop. For now, from what I saw here, except in one or two ongoing games, I would say that there's no way to fully utilize 200 or 240Hz monitors in terms of gaming at their native resolutions. All in all, with no surprise, it takes some serious power to get to those very high frame rates, even when we talk about 120 or 144 Hz monitors, but as seen in my example, at least in some games with single GPU setup, you can get to those figures by lowering down the graphical settings. With high refresh monitors like these ones being pretty pricey to begin with, especially ones with the G-Sync technology, that kind of setup will cost you on average more once you also count in the fact that it's desirable to have a graphics card which is coming from higher mainstream segments so you can output high frame rates. For 120 or 144 Hz monitors, I would say that it's somewhat justifiable to buy them as most of the games can be run in such high frame rates, even with just a stronger single GPU solution together with some tweaks, while for the 200Hz and above that we are still not quite there yet. After all, this is still a niche market, for now mostly aimed at professional gamers and enthusiasts who are willing to go that extra mile for a better experience or just love trying out new technologies. As for this SLI pair of GTX 1070s, it's a beastly combination which would performance-wise basically secure you for the next 2 or 3 years at least, especially now with their price being cut down just recently, which makes them even more attractive and a decent value purchase when we talk about buying from that higher tier segment of graphics cards, while still being justifiable with a decent proportional jump in performance together with the price of the product. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, that really helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you want to leave your suggestions, and of course feel free to subscribe for content further down the line or you can check out some of my other videos from before. Catch you later guys!